Right, I think we'll make a start. Um, welcome to the people who have attended to the presentation. The presentation is going to be probably about 10 15 minutes. Well, thanks for coming. Um, first slide is just a picture of the team and what was in the Foster office, which is unfortunately now because of COVID not open. So everything we do now is online. Um, so, aims of the section to make you aware of some of the issues you need to consider when applying for teaching, uh, point out the resources, there are lots of resources on teaching, it's very good, uh, give you some tips on improved application and explain what support you can get from careers. So as I've probably explained before in the notes, is I'm the careers advisor that has responsibility for teaching, so I tend to see most students, and I'll probably see, I don't know, maybe 50, 60 over the year, some people I've seen a quite a number of times. Okay, right. First issue, and this is the important one because some people, particularly in this time of the pandemic, will use teaching as an alternative and it isn't always the right case. It's got to be the right thing for you. Um, and lots of people apply for this because, as I say, on this point here, there's lots of jobs advertised, it is well paid, and there's good holidays. The downside of it, I would say, it is a full a full on job. So you are a teacher. Most teachers will probably arrive about eight in the morning, will not leave before five o'clock, and they've got lots of work and marking and preparation. So it's full on and it's not it's, it's not a job. So if you're in teaching a secondary school, you don't you have a couple of breaks, but it is full on all day. So it, it is quite quite a tough one. Um if you like working with people, and I put young people, I should really expand that because there are obviously other opportunities in post 16 and some people may decide they want to be a lecturer so obviously they will be working with people from 18 to 75 or 78 or whatever so there's a, there's a range of people but you've got to be interested in people and um, often a lot of people i see and i see a lot of people in humanities who enjoy a particular subject it might be religion or might be english it could be a chemist They've had a really good time at school, they've been a really good in teacher, they've enjoyed the subject and they want to pass that passion on. And that makes, I think, a really good teacher. And again, the last point I make, um, I've seen a lot of people like this, they want to make a difference. And quite often I've seen people who've come from quite a difficult background and the teaching's made a difference to their career and they want to help more people, which is, which is you know, really good. Okay, so what makes a good teacher, whatever level you teach at, ranging from primary to being a lecturer, I suppose, is you really need to know your subject knowledge. Um, and again, there are some opportunities in shortage subjects where I saw a person, I think I'm in religious studies actually, but done chemistry at A level, and was interested in retraining to do chemistry to get the knowledge. There are sometimes different ways into teaching different areas, particularly shortage areas. Obviously, you've got to be a great communicator. Again, you've got to really be able to get on with people. You've got to be good at developing relationships. Again, a key skill is listening as well, being able to listen to people. So again, sometimes there will be some teachers who are perhaps not as good at that. So it's very important to listen and pick up what people are saying. Um, and again, I think the next one is really important. It's, it's a bit about kindness, compassion, empathy. I piece that basically if I, I read this article and it's a primary teacher starting and she said those three words, so I just thought they're really good. Um, you've got to be really organised because, as I say, if you're teaching year seven, bottom set, and then you're teaching year eight, top set, and you might do two subjects, you, you've got to be on top of it. You've got them for an hour uh, in most cases. You've got to have loads of energy and you've got to be enthusiastic. Without that, you can't really teach uh, or you're not going to teach very well. Um, and again, most people say, and I think probably most students I see, would always say the best teachers have got a sense of humour and they get on really well with them. So it's about that. Um, different areas I mentioned before, so early years, which is the nursery side, primary, second, post-16, special needs, and again, there's work with adults as well. And again, sometimes you might teach English as a foreign language, possible. So the, the different things. Um, and one of the links I think I put on this presentation is from Prospect, and it talks about the 42 different types of occupations in education, uh, and I couldn't name off the top, top of the head, so it's quite an quite impressive list. Uh, entrance requirements, um, This I'm, I'm talking mainly at primary and secondary here, and it's slightly different at college. At college, 
you don't need to have maths in all subjects okay so you need a three gcse english and maths either grade c or the new level four um, and you want to teach primary you need a science and obviously you need a dps check uh, cost of it uh, for next year is 9250 um but might vary from place to place you'd have to check that out again you'll get a tuition fee for it or you'll get you'll get to a loan for this sorry which is basically the same price so you get 9250 so they just match each other um there are bursaries available in shortage subjects such as languages sciences technology the list for this year hasn't come out um the money the bursaries pay is quite a lot so for instance math is something like twenty five thousand. but say the figures don't haven't yet come out but they are very good for shortage subjects two routes in again i'm talking here schools and uh, rather than colleges uh, so the university route which is the traditional route so i skip to the next slide that list and i, I put the northwest universities because most of i see tend to want to stay in the northwest so we're quite fortunate in the Northwest, we've got, if I can count, seven, which is quite amazing. And we produce a lot of teachers in the Northwest. And so historically, it's quite quite a strong tradition in the Northwest. So Chester, Cumbria, Edge Hill, which is Ormskirk, which is probably the nearest one to us. Liverpool Hall, Liverpool John Moore, Manchester, University of Manchester, Met. so quite a lot. If we go back a slide, so the, the university route is a traditional route, which has been going for 100 plus years, yeah, over 100 years. Um, so if you went to Manchester Met, say for instance, and did it, you, what you would traditionally do is you start in September, do the theory side till half term of October, then after half term, go to your first school and then come back after Christmas and do the theory side and then go to your second school. So it's two placements basically. The school's direct slightly different, it's been around probably about, I don't know, five, six years now and well established now. Um, you get a number of schools that work together, maybe 10 schools work together, and one of them becomes a lead school which offers the training day. So the difference, one of the big differences is with Schools Direct, you would do the training one day a week, quite often they use a Friday, and all the trainees go to one school, the training school, and the training is done by the teachers, who obviously got the expertise, but also usually quite often attached to a university, and the university helps out as well, okay? Um, with the schools direct, you're in school from September the 1st. Um, in theory, you spend on both routes the same amount of time in school, but as I say, the schools direct, you would start in September right at the beginning. The, the, the reason it's quite popular with a lot of students I see, it's local based. So you say, for instance, you lived in, I don't know, Preston. You say you live in Preston, there are three or four training providers around here, Schools Direct, can be five. Um, so you could do it locally, so you don't have to travel to Manchester or you don't have to travel to Cumbria or whatever. So it's quite popular that way. But again, it's up to individuals which they prefer. Uh, we've looked at the universities. Now, if you are interested, the government has a website, Get Into Teaching. Now, I saw a student yesterday and I forgot. Um, it doesn't actually open the uh, facility for searching until uh, October the 6th. Very good. It's really useful. So, if, say, for instance, you lived in Bolton and you wanted to teach RE it would, and you wanted to within 20 miles, it would give you a list of all the training providers, universities, and schools direct. So it's really, really good and gives you links to everything, which you really need, then need to have a look at. The, the other thing which I should mention, which isn't on these slides, is if you are interested in teaching, the applications for teaching open on October the 13th, which is a couple of weeks' time. Um, slight change to teaching this year. Uh, for as long as I can ever remember, all teaching applications have gone through UCAS, but this year, the government have introduced their own system as well called apply so there's two systems um so you need to check which system you were going through and again a lot of the ones that we tend to deal with around here are using ucas but as i say you would need to check that out again if you're not so sure come, come, come have a word now uh the, the ucas application so i'm going to go to the, I, I, i'm using the ucas because i don't know i haven't seen anything about the apply system so i don't know how that one works yet um so um 
you apply to UCAS, uh, the postgraduate uh, teaching application. Um, you register with apply. Uh, you get your personal details. Uh, so, uh, so, so additional information is more about sort of uh, sex, ethnicity, things like that. So the government can collect figures on that. Uh, then you put your program choices. So with primary and secondary, three choices. If, say, for instance, you're applying for post 16, this is where it gets complicated, which is the college side. Some go through UCAS, so eventually will go through UCAS, but quite a lot around here it's just direct entry. So you wanted to apply to Blackpool, Preston, Bloodshaw College, it would be individual applications to those that are slightly different to them. Uh, going back to the UCAS form, so you do your education, so you start with university, your colleges, and your GCSEs. Um, then, now this is going to be a difficult bit, it's the school and work experience. Now, there isn't going to be any work experience this year with COVID. So, unless you've got some work experience working with young people, that's a section you just can't fill in. But that's 90% of people going to be in that situation as well. Um, as I say, then you write your personal statement. You need two references. Um, so, one would be an academic. And one would be somebody else that could give you a good character reference. And again, you need to get those fairly soon because if you leave it right to the end, um, say it's November, and you try and get one off from the academics and they have that reference ready for you, you could have a long wait because they're going to be really busy. Okay, so it's worth asking them now, basically, if you're interested in that. Um, and the best rest is just pay your fees and send your form off. Now, the tricky bit on the personal statement. Is a personal statement and some of the points on the first two slides are very relevant for this because it talks about what makes a good teacher okay so you need to interest why is it you want to teach what is the reason for it okay so i think i mentioned that at the beginning then why is it primary or secondary or post 16. so people are very you know i see a lot of people don't want to teach in secondary they would rather teach in post 16. so you've got to explain why you want to do what's the difference okay the teaching experience, if you've got any, that's really good, and that's really probably the most important section. But there, you're now going to have to come up with some example of if you have worked with young people. If you haven't, you can still apply because there's going to be lots of people who just can't fill that section in this year. Okay, your relevancy degree, so quite a number of degrees will have lots of options relevant to it. So if you're doing a degree in English, there'll be lots of things that will be common to what they do in GCSE English. So sometimes we're saying, go and look at the GCSE curriculums and see what the similarities are. And basically, I think if you're doing something like history or RE, they know what you're doing. But if you're doing, or oh, the people reading it, but if you're doing something slightly unusual, say you're doing neurosciences, they might not know what you're doing. So you need to tell them about what the degree involves, okay? Um, so again, I put down some skills. So again, I've always said to people when they've gone work experience, these are the things to look at. What, you know, look at the teachers. Give example of initiative, creativity, time management, listening, teamwork, energy. But again, that's transferable. So that can be for any, any part of your life, basically, using those skills that are relevant. And as I say, it's going to be more difficult for the sort of when they're recruiting at interviews because there will be lots of people with no work experience this year. Uh, but having said that, I saw a student in July who got no work experience but had done a homework, came across very well, and hopefully is now starting or has started a technology, design technology uh, degree at the John Moores, I think it was. Again, spelling grammar goes without, uh, goes without saying you need to check that. Uh, support from careers. So we're going to organise some teacher training. Well, we do organise teacher training presentations. Normally there would be physical presentations, but it's going to be online. So in November, uh, from something like the 5th to the 20th of November, we've got Careers Festival. And there's going to be, because we're still working on this, quite a number of presentations. Um, possibly six, I can't remember off the top of my head, but there's going to be a lot. And that'll be advertised and that's in November. And these will be actual teachers from schools or universities talking. Um, again, got Chris there. Will there be more teaching in 21? Um, can help with advice for your choices. So some people really struggle to make that decision. So because I, again, I was talking about I do this because I've seen so many students over a long time. 
I know most of the places around here and I know a little bit about them. I can help with your personal statement. So a student I saw yesterday and she's going to send a personal statement and arrange an interview so we can go through it. Um, and again, slightly different than mock interviews this year because it's probably going to be through Teams or Zoom or something like that. I would think might change after spring, who knows? Um, so they're slightly different, but again, it is quite useful to have a practice some of the sort of standard questions they ask. So it's rather making a mistake in a real interview, make a mistake with me or one of whoever careers of ITC. And again, there's support available from careers throughout the year and after you leave. So somebody contacted me yesterday who graduated two years ago. Um, so that's me, I'm a careers ITC specialist. Now the references. We've got Getting to Teaching, which is the government website, which is really good. Um, prospects Teaching, again, is very good. Target Teaching is. And then the one I talked about with 32 jobs is the last link um, at the bottom. Now, as I say, uh, what I'll do, I have to send these PowerPoint presentation points uh, to the person who sorts it all out. So I'll do that later on. So the PowerPoint slides will appear uh, sometime this, later this week. So you can have a look at all these. And again, um, I think most people are aware of Career Edge and everything's done through Career Edge, so you find everything out there. Um, and again, we've got different types of appointments, so 20 minutes appointments, 45 minute appointments. And school pages, <coughs> if we do a talk in schools, that will be put on that page. Uh, careers for so webinars, so this is a webinar, we do uh, two of those a week at the moment. Um, and then that is the last slide. So have you any questions you want to ask me? It might be you want to make an appointment. We can talk it more in depth, but. Oh, right. And, uh, yeah, right. Oh, God, a million. Right. I think, yes. Yeah, right. OK, uh, we'd be here all day, actually. And it's probably better. I was going to say person to person, but more it'll be via Teams interview. So probably it's best to arrange an interview, uh, go through career edge, make an appointment with me to talk about teaching. Yeah. That's great, we've got million questions. Right, thank you for coming. Um, have a good day, and I hope it was okay. Nice to nice to meet you.